Hey, everybody, if there's some people on my computer screen, it must be Friday Night Explain Yourself Kickstarter Roundtable. We have Rob, Brett, and Travis in tonight. You know, we don't have we don't have our buddy Will already. He had to take the night off. He uh, is um, solving crimes. Um, I'm not going to tell you which ones, but if you are one of the biggest cocaine uh uh, throwers in Arkansas, I would watch out. Uh, so he's not going to be here. He's going to be um, out, uh, you know, kicking ass and taking names. And speaking of kicking ass and taking names, let's find out who everybody is on a round table tonight. Rob, if you could ex uh, kind of uh, t tell us who you are and a 30 second pitch on um, the samples from the lab for somebody who might not have met you or heard about the campaign yet. Okay, great to meet everyone. Uh, my name's uh, Rob Foote. I'm an illustrator uh, based in New Zealand, and uh, the project is called Samples from the Lab, and it's a, a kind of a scientific journal that features all these kind of crazy creations that uh, have been created by this mad scientist. Uh, it doesn't have a specific genre, but it's it's been really popular, and uh, we're very happy that the response has been so good. Yeah, no, it's awesome. We we Will and I usually joke about our um, organizational skills. We have all age uh, projects tonight for everybody. So we we made sure and have an 11 p.m. show uh, for the kids. So wake them up, get, 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 get them out of bed and let them hear about these uh, books. Brett, what is Detective Potatoes? So Detective Potatoes is my all ages uh, noir um, detective story that's a spinoff of my Dust Bunny Mafia comic. Dust Bunny Mafia is a newspaper style comic that's like Looney Tunes meets The Godfather. And Detective Potatoes is the first series, uh, first novel in this spinoff where coffee craving zombies have run amok in the city. And the Detective Potatoes is on the hunt and he enlists the unlikely help of the Mafia to track them down. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. When we, we first talked about it, uh, you said, yeah, my book is uh, Detective Potatoes. And I said, you're on the show. I didn't I didn't ask anything <laughs> else. I heard that title and I said, I have to talk about Detective Potatoes. And we've got to deep dive this baby. Travis, you are, are my you, you're my fellow Floridian. Uh, we, we may not have Will, but it's like we have our, our special uh, guest host with us. Um, so what are you bringing to Kickstarter now? Well, hold on. Let's let's take a step back. I dug this out and read it today, so I wouldn't embarrass myself. In the world. I didn't want to read this. Will like I know when you watch. Like, I don't want to read this today. I had shit to do, and he doesn't even bother to show up. Is that what you're saying, Kevin Joseph? I'm, I'm saying his plan worked. <laughs> He, he had 182 Kickstarter backers on Crossover Vision with physical books. He actually asked me to get all 182 on the show. I okay. said, one at a time, we're starting with Travis. So this is how he gets his book read. All right, all right. Because I just, I feel like I wasted my day. I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, it's it's a good book. I'll back the next one, but still, you know. And I had Buyer's Remorse, you know. He had that beautiful Mog Parks cover, wow. and I decided not to opt for it. But the minute you get this... After you've seen that cover, you're just like, you know what? You messed up, son. You messed up. Yeah. It, when, when you when you have a chance to go Mog Park, you always go Mog Park. Always go Mog Park. Um, so, yeah, I'm here uh, representing Orange Cone Productions. It's actually not my book. I mean, it is my family's book. We have a book called the Sing Super Delish Sing Along comic book, Cottage Cheese. So it's a song about my son who's addicted to cottage cheese and won't eat anything else. Maybe that's why he's sick right now. No, that's not my surprise. <laughs> my wife uh, and my wife started singing a song one day and I said, um, you know, you should write that down and make it a real song. And she did. And then uh, before I knew it, there was comic pages coming in. And I was like, what are you doing? Uh, we're making a comic book. I thought we were doing a song. Oh, we're doing that too. And then I'm in a studio and like it became a whole thing, Kevin. You uh, know what? Let's get into this whole thing. Let's right. let's do it. So. I, uh, a lot of times people are like, hey, can we show our Kickstarter video? And I and I have to be like, you know, the the, the school librarian, Shh, no, no videos, because most people create really cool videos that are characters punching each other and grunting, right. <laughs> which is fine for this live part. We, you know, we're up on YouTube. People are watching it. That's fine. But then we put it on a podcast with no visuals. And all you hear is every like 13 seconds a 
<laughs> so I, I nix it. I say, no, no, we're not doing that. But I think for your Kickstarter video, I think we can play it. Do you yeah. mind sharing your page? And maybe do you want to start with the uh, the video and then get into it? Or do you want to yeah, yeah, lay yeah. out the book better? No, we'll, we'll start with the video, especially for the podcast listeners. We'll, we'll cater to them tonight instead Got of the other way around. Right. Um, so this is the video. And uh, so basically the way the comic works, the bare basics, is you're going to get a book. And with that book, you're going to get a QR code that will sing along as you're reading the book. So it'll sing the song as you go through the book. That's the whole premise of it. It's a sing-along comic. Uh -huh. um, and uh, you're going to go to a web page that will download it on whatever you want. Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, whatever you want to play it. But on, for our Kickstarter video, we have the full song. So let's play this whole song for the crew. <laughs> Remy sailing in the ocean, kicking that roll to the keys. He once drank a secret potion with a pinch of cottage cheese. They went riding in the moonlight, magic carpets in the breeze. Cannonballed into a pool of creamy goodness, cottage cheese. Cottage cheese. Cottage cheese. cheese, it's all I want to eat, it's cottage cheese, cottage cheese, cottage cheese, cottage cheese, every day for breakfast, cottage cheese. Remy's climbing up a mountain, started begging on his knees, for a flowing, tasty fountain of delicious cottage cheese. They went dancing in the forest, with a swarm I'm sharing a little secret with you guys about the most amazing food I know. Grown-ups usually hog it for themselves. You know how grown-ups can be like that. Well, guess what? Cottage cheese. Yes, I said it. Cottage cheese. It's delicious, nutritious, and I know this is a lot ambitious, but it's everything to me. And you say, if I love it so much, why don't I marry it? Well, okay, I do. I choose you for breakfast, cottage cheese. I choose you for lunch, cottage cheese. I choose you for dinner, cottage cheese. Always and forever, cottage cheese. Remy's running even faster, playing outside in the breeze. He got squirted with a blaster that was full of cottage cheese. Then he opened up his big mouth, and he begged his mama please, for another healthy spoonful of amazing cottage cheese. Cottage cheese, cottage cheese. It's all I want to eat, it's cottage cheese. Cottage cheese, cottage cheese. Every night for dinner, cottage cheese. Cottage cheese, cottage cheese. It's all I want to eat, it's cottage cheese. Cottage cheese, cottage cheese. Every night for dinner, cottage cheese. Every night for dinner, cottage cheese. Cottage cheese. And that, kids, is how you get your Kickstarter video played on Explain Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a catchy song, huh? It's very good. I, yeah, I if can... you like cottage cheese, uh, it is right <laughs> up your alley. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. When I first heard it, I thought, I wonder if they're trying to get their son to eat cottage cheese, kind of like the Popeye and spinach thing. But it's the opposite. The kid is leading with it. That's great. Yeah, my son has like... Uh, four food groups like it's pizza cottage cheese cheese like your cheese and crackers and uh you know candy uh that's the, yeah. that's the four <laughs> i was gonna ask i mean that that is that's all four of the food groups i think right, I was right. Check your candy. you gotta have candy as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was thinking I, I don't have too many others than that <laughs> Oh. No, the great thing too, Travis, if any of us says anything you don't like, you can just hit me now with a cease and desist because I played the whole song way more than um, I'm probably legal allowed if you rescind the right. So everybody right. be nice to Travis tonight because yeah. I don't know how to edit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
You'll be okay. Uh, we like you. But as you can see, I mean, the song, it's all about my son. It's all about our dog, John Ralphio, and they go on adventures. All the images are my family. My, my wife put our family through and little Easter eggs of my family. You, Kevin and I have, uh, I actually, we did a con together and my wife came and my son when he was just a baby. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's wild to see, you know, my family all up in there and it's wild. That's so cool, man. Is it all, it's all your work as well? Uh, no, I, I have zero to do with it. I am just the uh, publisher. Uh, oh, you know, okay. it is. Uh, I made the child that's addicted to cottage cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah hey, man, that's that. the hardest part, honestly. That's the most difficult part. It so wasn't the hard part. It's certainly a, a long con, Travis, a very <laughs> long con. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Orange Cone didn't have enough comics, so I was like, you know what? If I get this woman pregnant in about four <laughs> yeah. years, she'll make a song yeah. about one of the foods that this kid eats. And but that'll I, get one yeah. extra book on the Orange Cone playlist. It's it so me. interesting because that stuff happens. And and I love that you guys corralled it and used it. Um, uh, I think, yeah, I, think I heard somebody. I cut, cut somebody off. I apologize. Oh, I, could you explain more how it works with the barcode and the, and the music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, uh, StreamYard's not great, but if you go onto the website and uh, you know click on it, we actually have it here. There yeah. is a full website that'll have that'll do everything. It'll uh, if you click on that QR code on the the Singalong blog or go to singalongcomics.com, it'll bring you to the website, and the website will basically play. It will open up whatever browser you want. So if you want Spotify, you click on the Spotify. It'll bring up Spotify. Okay. It'll bring up the song, and then you can read the comic along as you go. So you can that's very read cool. It, eh? it, one page at a time and it'll sing the song to you as you go that's super clever actually it's a great yeah. way to, um, for kids for reading as well right yeah exactly exactly everything's big everything's fun there's activities in the back we even have um, a couple of pledge levels that have uh, coloring pages in the front uh we we really designed this for kids you know it's not Unlike some people are like, this is all ages. Everyone can enjoy it. Well, everyone can because the song is catchy. But really, you know, this is for your kids. This is, yeah, this is yeah. for your kids to play with. Uh, but we do have the rest of the Orange Cone catalog in here, too. So if you want some of our adult stuff, you know, like our Cthulhu Invades Oz or our Voodoo Dations or even our new books, Coins of Judas and Greta State Punk, you can get all those back issues on the on the Kickstarter. Oh, do you include that as uh, in your rewards or how do you uh, get the extra, you know, the other stuff from your comic they're, collection? Yeah, they're, they're called add-ons. So you can okay. do it as an add-on. So there will okay. be different options. And then there's a couple of pledge levels of just stuff that is written by my wife. So I separate. Oh. It from my stuff, Travis's stuff, and my wife. My wife owns a company with me. She is the co-publisher. Um, so you know, oh, it's, it's, she's, it's she's also the co-creator of the boy who likes cottage cheese. <laughs> right, she is. <laughs> she is a co-creator. She actually did a lot more of the work. Like I, I was done early on in the process, and like for nine months, she kept talking about it. Like, that sounds like that sounds like the writer artist uh, division of labor usually. Yeah, right. true. I am always true. on the easier side, Kevin. Have you noticed? <laughs> <laughs> it's nice work if you can get it. So, one question: um, Are are is the dialogue and narration exact um, in the book as it comes from the song? It, it is. The only difference is there's uh, like if we're looking at a page. I know this isn't great for audio. There's like you know, you see Remy saying this is fun or cowabunga dudes. Remy may be saying some other cool stuff. Uh, yeah. You know extra stuff that's not in the song but yeah the narration of it is all there like cannibal into got a cheese it'll it'll be all there creamy goodness got a cheese that'll be cool yeah, like yeah. almost to help them with sight words then because they'll you know we know we know kids right. um this song is going to be going on enough that people are going to go from loving you to to hating you <laughs> right. but, but if the kid is always seeing cottage cheese and though that c-o-t-t-a-g-e c-h-e-e-s-e i could spell it um but they see it over and over and over and they hear it like they're gonna they're gonna start making that thing so yeah you're teaching kids That's to brilliant. read man that, that that is a wild statement because uh, you've read my books and normally it's a lot of f words and uh, things. So it's, it's good to, to put some good out in the world. I'm glad that my wife is there. Um, and if you don't know, uh, kids books are really hard to fund on Kickstarter. Uh, you know that's that's a just a thing. The other thing is my wife has such a passion for kids. She works in child welfare. Like every day, okay. 
She's saving kids. She's getting them out of bad situations and helping them. So this is uh, very important. And we're hoping that we can even use it in her business, you know, uh, in, in her day-to-day job, you know, give a kid a comic book, like help out through that stuff. So we're excited about getting it on our table and being able to really activate, you know, everyone who does a kid's book, they're like, hey, it's miserable on Kickstarter, but it's it's such a joy. I think you're even one of them, Kevin, who said it's such a joy to give a kid's book to sell a book to a kid and then get excited about it. So uh, I think that that's a, that's a big thing. And that's what we're hoping to do. Oh, it looks yeah. amazing. And you know, the artwork's really cool as well, man. Yeah. Thanks. We're, we're, we're super proud. I love this artist. He's super fun. He was, he was a joy to work with. Uh, and the name of the, he artist? Did the colors as well. He did the colors as well. Uh, and I mean, he's just a sweet guy. My wife found him. I don't even know how my wife found him. I should ask her that. I don't know the answer. Louis Galvin. You usually ask that question. I should. I should. <laughs> right, right. Guy, who's that guy and where did you find yeah, him? Yeah, why do you find guy? Where did you find guys on the internet? Because I don't feel comfortable with this one. <laughs> um, but no, he was super nice. Like he sent a family. There's a family picture in there that he sent to my wife at Christmas. You know, like they have a, re- it's been really nice. And it's, I like artists like like that i have a few artist relationships where it's more than just it's a comic book day but they care about the the process and the people so mm-hmm. oh cool man yeah and pretty cool to see your family as you say you know so there's little easter eggs for you guys to see of your own kind of you know your lives really yeah no it, it is is a lot a lot of fun so uh i i'm super excited about having this book in our catalog and using it and uh selling it to the big you know Big corporate court cottage cheese, you know. So we'll yeah. get to them and see what yeah, sponsorship's do. the next step, I'd say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the the Briar Briar story time hour with <laughs> right. They'll probably make us take out some stuff, uh, but uh, for the most part, I think it'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The one beheading, I think they might want right. to <laughs> I can't believe you guys put that in. But well, yeah, based based on Florida politics, they may take out uh, Cape Canaveral and the Keys. They may, they may get rid of that old first. All right. <laughs> All right. No, that that is awesome. So, um, do you who's who's the letter on it? Let's get the whole team out. Who's the letter? You know, do you have an? You know who the letter is. The letter of all Orange Cone projects. Jerome Gagnon. Nice. Which, you, uh, if you notice, his dog looks like the dog. He has a uh, miniature schnauzer just like us. That looks, they look identical. They are actually dating in real life. Uh, okay. That's, the, you know, they long distance because that's a Canadian dog. Um, oh, okay. Well, that's amazing that the relationship's doing so well, you know? Yeah, it's, it's doing well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, CC is asking in the chat, is Big Cheese getting a cut? Um uh, Travis, is this an exclusive? Is Big Cheese getting a cut of your profits? Uh, they aren't, but if if you know anybody in Big Cheese, uh, we're interested in negotiating. We'd love to give them a cut. Yeah, <laughs> it would be more of a scoop than a cut, I guess. <laughs> I I'd like to to get some sort of big big cottage cheese. I don't like cottage cheese at all, so that's its oh. own thing. Uh, so oh, that's that, interesting. Hopefully so that doesn't. Why does your son love it so much? Then? My wife uh, fed him chocolate cheese. My wife, I like chocolate cheese. Well, I'll tell you this, you know, like I, uh, you know, like I got, I, I, I haven't stopped being this way, but I was like, man, Kev, you got pretty fat. You got to do something about this. So I got one of those ca- calorie counters. Yep. The only thing that can boost my protein up on the, on the protein, fat, carbs is cottage cheese. I can eat like seven slices of turkey meat. It doesn't do anything for the percentages. But if I have a thing of cottage cheese, my protein shoots up. So you're just, oh, all right. just getting him some muscles, man. It's all right. Yeah. He's a growing <laughs> lad. He needs yeah. cottage cheese. Right? Yeah, well, yeah. We try to cater towards kids. Like this is Roblox. If you have kids of the age, you know what Roblox is. So we did a Roblox cover. You know, we've, we've done our research. Yeah, yeah. market research. You know what, they, what they're after, right? It looks really great, huh? Awesome. Thank you. Well, all right. Let's let's pop out. It perfect. And um, Brett, let's get into Detective Potatoes. Um, do you mind sharing your screen? And I will. I'll pull it up, and you can kind of tell us. Um, this isn't. This is kind of a a rolling out of of your uh, what Dust Bunny Mafia is that what you said before? Yeah. So. Um, 
did someone come to you and say, I really want you to do this? Is this something that was always in your head? Where, where did this, this offshoot of your main story come from in your brain? So this was actually a uh, collaboration with my, um, one of my college roommates. Um, we've been friends for a long time now. Um, I can out <laughs> myself there. Um, and he is actually you, a- you, you were until you did the math. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so my call, one of my college roommates, his name's Dan Bernstrom. He's a children's book author. Um, he actually has written six children's books, and he's got a growing family of five kids. He lives in uh, Minnesota. And um, when I moved to Chicago um, in 2016, we kind of, you know, rekindled because we were so close. I did a couple of conventions up in Minnesota and uh, got to see him, spend time with his family. And we were, you know, great roommates back then. And with him being a writer, he's had all these other projects that he's been doing. He teaches English um, and he's always been a fan of my work. And when I did my first convention up in Minnesota, uh, I said, hey, can I ship a, you know, a box of my books up to your house and just pick them up from you as opposed to trying to carry them on the plane. And I was like, it'll be a lot cheaper. And he's like, oh yeah, of course, I don't care. And so ever since then, um, I mean, when I first came to him, I got the idea of Dust Bunny Mafia in college and I told him about it. And as a writer, he loved and hated me. And he's told me that many <laughs> times because he's like, this is awesome. And I hate that you found it first. Um, and so Detective Potatoes is a spinoff, um, and it's a, an all ages detective story, but it's written actually towards the, um, I'm going to screw it up. The, it's not reclusive readers. It's, um, like six to eight year olds or Re uh, eight reluctant to 10. readers. Yes, exactly. Reluctant readers is actually who it's targeted towards. Um, because Dan, um, having his, you know, growing family, he's got kids, um, his oldest is 11, I believe. And so, and his kids really have devoured my comics. Um, and I've got, he's sent me pictures and told me how much his kids like my comics. They like the, uh, colorful images. They like, uh, just the characters even if they don't understand all of what's going on, they like the style, it's cute, it's slapstick, it's, you know, cartoony. And um, he's like, your kids fight over bringing your books or my kids fight over bringing your books on road trips more than they <laughs> fight over bringing my books. Um, <laughs> well, that's a and so, so yeah. he's just trying to get in here just to get his kids to read his work. That's not what he's doing. Yeah. He's using you for cool points with the children. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. And he can say, you know, daddy wrote this and, you know, um, but yeah, so about a year ago, uh, we had talked about, you know, writing something together. And as I'm scrolling and you can see, um, so this is the first chapter and it's a, um, so it's written, it's prose, text and illustrations. Um, and it's kind of going to be that um, almost in every double page spread, there's going to be one image. And so it gets, you know, that connecting with, you know, your, it's a chapter book, it's an early chapter book, but it's all ages friendly, there's stuff. It was written um, for kids and adults alike to enjoy it. You don't have to be a kid. You can just enjoy, you know, comics and mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. And so, the main premise, Detective Potatoes, there's a coffee apocalypse. So there is um, a, as you can see, a crow uh, taps on and breaks into Detective Potatoes' office late at night, screaming for coffee. And he kind of awakes with a, you know, startled. He spills coffee on himself. And then he's like, uh, coffee, specifically um, caffeinated coffee, is uh, banned, or at least it's in very small doses. 
And so the first thing he does is he runs over and tries to get him a, you know, a bit of coffee to calm him down. And then he realizes that it's, that the city's out of coffee, out of caffeinated coffee. The only thing they're serving is decaf and all these townspeople are turning into zombies. And so he knows that, you know, due to his being a police detective, working with the mob, working to try and catch the mob, if anything knows what what's going on with this, it's going to be the Dust Bunny Mafia. And so um, this was, oh, that's the Dust Bunny Mafia. This is Leo. He's the boss. This is Jimmy. He's kind of his right-hand bunny. Um, and this is, you know, a couple uh, strips from the um, from the introduction to Mickey Potatoes, and so you can kind of see how my comics are, and then the book, as you can see, is a mix of prose and um, illustrations, and everything is um, is done, and it's in this black and white noir style. Um, and yeah, so, uh, you, how, how much did you guys outline the story together or did he just kind of pitch you the idea and, and send you drafts or were you, were you kind of breaking the story with him, uh, as you went? Yeah. Um, hundred percent. We, he came up with the initial pitch of a zombie apocalypse and, um, and I said, what about, you know, I was throwing suggestions at him and we were doing this, you know, we had a lot of, you know, two to three hour phone calls every couple of weeks. Um, and we, we settled on coffee apocalypse and, um, but it was really a, um, so I do everything with the dust bunny mafia myself. So I write it, I illustrate it, I make the books, I, wow. you know, get them printed, but then I go to, either Kickstarter, I go to shows and I, you know, try and sell them myself. Um, got a web store. And so pretty much unless it comes to like a variant cover or a pinup, 98% of the Dust Bunny Mafia is me. And this I is see. the first time. So, um, first time you yeah, let your babies go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was the first time. And he's someone I trust, someone I've known for a long time. And I'm like, you want to play in the sandbox? you know what, that'd be fun. Let's do it. And <laughs> so, um, and yeah, I mean, he would send me, you know, scripts and we talked through the outline high level and, you know, I would, you know, we'd go through the story and I'm like, wait, wait, all right, going to stop you there. This character would not do that. Mm -hmm. Even though he uh, knows my comics and he knows right. my books and stuff. I'm like, all right, we need to switch this character out for this one, or we need to, you know, let's not introduce this guy. You let, yeah, let's push him back, you know, a couple chapters into this part. And so it was a very uh, give and go uh, process with it. Yeah. That's so interesting that you can, you know, even somebody who really knows the work is, is gonna uh, pu push things. Uh, and, and so where do you find that line of uh, pushing? Oh, I wouldn't have thought of that. That's great. And, that's not the character it can't how do you make that decision um well i think that we've known each other long enough we've lived with each other um you know pre both of us getting married and stuff and you know the awkward college years um that i don't know how much i would impose rules and stuff on him as much as he's like hey you're even allowing me to come in and play with mm -hmm. your characters, you have full rights to say, you know, that this isn't, you know, this isn't right. And he's like, and I respect that. Um, and at the same time, like I was asking him about all these different Kickstarter things, um, even though I'm the only one that's been doing the Kickstarters, he's got a, um, a publishing company that he works with for his books and it's a completely different route. He knows that side. I know the indie side of it. And he's like, Hey, it's your Kickstarter. Like I'm the, you know, we wrote the book together. It's my words, your illustrations, your characters, your Kickstarter. So run it by me. But for the most part, you do you, you know how to work these things. Mm. 
My, I have a question, if that's okay, Kevin. Go for it. Brett, um, as you know, I clearly had an agenda uh, in my book, you know, a uh, very harsh agenda uh, to get cottage <laughs> cheese in the kids' mouths. Uh, is your goal to introduce children to the mafia early to make sure they're safe, or is it to get them addicted to coffee early? I'm okay with either one. I just want to know which one my kid's going to be influenced in first. Well, um, I mean, your kid probably already knows about coffee more than he knows about, <laughs> you know, the mafia. I mean, all kids, they know that their parents drink this disgusting black or brown. And, you know, that was my experience for the longest time. My parents drank Javalia black straight coffee. And I'm like, this is disgusting. I don't know how you guys do it. Even in high school, I was like, I don't know. And then I turned into a coffee snob myself. Um, but we actually had been talking and it wasn't in most of this book was actually written and was in the editing stages. I had done probably 80% of the illustrations by that point. And it was being pitched to, uh, his editor when we realized that, um, I have a lot of friends in the indie comics community, um, that have, you know, written all ages or kid focused books. And pre-pandemic, they were going to schools and they were doing, you know, uh, different events where they would talk, doing school lectures and things like that. And they'd sell their books. They'd draw some pictures and things like that and talk about their stories. And I was telling Dan, I think that would be awesome with this book. And he's like, yeah, but we can't put the mafia in a public library or, you know, Mm -hmm. something like that. And it was that kind of a conversation where we decided that we needed to rebrand it. And so he actually took the script and we said, what if we did it from the cops hunting the mafia perspective? And so we flipped it and then decided that we were just gonna run with it that way. And so, and that was only about, I think it was in January where we actually realized we already had the Kickstarter planned for March, but it was, we are going to um, completely switch it. We're going to, you know, rewrite the script a bit and pivot. Yeah, just changing changing the focal point. You didn't have to change the story much, but yeah. you had to change the focal point. And obviously there was a lot of work there in doing so, but if you can market it better than, and you're still cool with the story, I think that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Yeah, it worked out really well. See, uh, Travis and I are in Florida. Our kids know about disorganized crime. We, they don't know about organized crime. We, <clears throat> we're more meth alligators being thrown into Denny's than, you know. Yeah, through the drive through window and Florida man. And Well, and I want to make it very clear. He said Denny's because you don't mess with Waffle House. Waffle House would take out a gator. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's <gator>. true. <laughs> I've been to Kentucky. Yeah, I, I believe that. <laughs> I've been to those Waffle Houses. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, one of the things that definitely, uh, helped me in my comics was moving to Chicago. I mean, I lived in LA for a while, but coming to Chicago and being so steeped in mobster history with Capone and with, uh, politicians and, you know, different things that definitely helped boost my credibility when it came to my comics. That's all. That's awesome. It's interesting to think of where you are helping you um, create in in that kind of you know, just just a just a touch, just a just an added flavor to what you're doing. Yep. Um, can people get your Dust Bunny uh, Mafia books as add-ons with this campaign, or is there a tier where they can get everything if they wanted to? No, that's uh, going to be released uh at a later date um right now we were heavily focused on the book itself um because it's a spinoff and because it's you don't really need to know the dust bunny mafia in order to um but we are pulling both dan's audience with his books and my audience with the kickstarters and the dust bunnies um but yes there is a plan um i actually just rolled out the add-ons um early this morning um And so, but there are some different tiers that will be new pledge levels that will be released strategically throughout the campaign for some different add-ons, but 
but yeah, right now, uh, it's just here, but I mean, I've got a comic, um, website, comics.dustbymafia.com where people can read, um, a lot of my comics, probably 95% of my comics are published there before they get into printed books and mm -hmm. people can read that for free. There's no paywall. There's no gate. You can just, you know, find the navigation, say, take me back to the first strip and read all 700 of them that are on there. Wow. And, and, and then drop in at least $7 in, in, in the campaign. If you do that, people, you know, I'm saying that he's not <laughs> 700 pages, a, a penny a page. I think that's a pretty good, uh, uh, somebody check my math. I'm not so good at that. Um, well, this is awesome. If you could, um, or unpresent it, I don't exactly know how you do it on, on that side, because if I close it out, then I make you go away. And I want you to be here as we, uh, pivot to samples from the lab. Now, Rob, you are the artist on this, correct? Yeah. Artist and, uh, the writer. Artist and the writer. Are, oh no, you're doing yeah. it all. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. So, but all I'm right. working with, uh, with Andy, who's been a kind of a partner. He's really good with Kickstarter. He's done a lot of Kickstarters. So it's been a really good yeah, collaboration because I actually wouldn't know what to do most of the time, you know, so he's been great. Well, I'm going to share the screen. I think between the two of you, you know what you're doing because this campaign is absolutely killing it. Um, are we talking to somebody in the future? Because he's, it, it looks like it's day behind him or he. No, man, I am, I am in the future, yeah. Travis. Yeah. I'm speaking yeah. to you from the future. Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's tomorrow. Let me write some numbers down. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's evening here, yeah, six o'clock in the evening. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm getting a bit he, he of a said, lag. You're, uh, yeah, you're you're not doing great. I think what he's trying to say, uh, Rob, I'll I'll take over to help Kevin out. I uh, just kind of talk about the campaign. Tell us a little bit about it. Why he adjusts? Oh, uh, so it's Kevin. I thought it was me, actually. Okay. No, Kevin's. Uh, he lives okay. in a bad part of Florida. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like he can hear us, and he's scrolling, right? Because that's not you, or is that? Yeah, you? that's not me. No, I think he's actually. Yeah, he's doing the. Scrolling. All right, so he can hear. Uh, he can scroll. So go ahead and tell us about the book. Oh, uh, okay. So it's uh it's this uh, scientific lab, basically these experiments that this uh, the scientist starts to do these kind of crazy experiments with animals and genetic experiments, basically, and uh, he. Uh, he eventually he becomes a genetically modified uh, thing himself. But along the way, it's just almost as if this journal was discovered hidden in the rubble of of this destroyed laboratory. And the the writing kind of tells a story of how the animals come about, but it's also kind of weaves through the story of this kind of crazy scientist at the same time. Nice, and, nice. Yeah, it's, and this is all your art. This is beautiful. Yeah. Man. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it's pretty old now. It's uh, the actual artwork is about ten years old. So the whole book project's been sitting in a drawer for the last uh, seven years or something. Really, I've just been, you know, working on it here and there. And then uh, I kind of connected with Andy, and and we decided to make a project. So it's uh it's oh. really great it's been it's been really good and uh it's because it's backed i'm really happy it'll it'll be made you know that's the best thing to have a physical copy it's really cool on behalf of everyone um uh bad word you for holding on to this for 10 years we could have had this 10 years ago <laughs> Uh, it's, I think it's kind of good because, you know, ideas percolate and uh, you guys are all great writers. I am not much of a writer, you know, so the story <laughs> part has been a real struggle for me, to be honest. Like the illustrations came pretty easily, but the stories, uh, it's been pretty hard. And yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> it's just so like cute the, and clever. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Travis. I said I like that porcupine uh, pineapple. Oh yeah, Pocky Pineapple. <laughs> they're so silly. They just they just silly, man. That's the thing. I think that's why people like them because they don't it's not very intellectual, you know. What came first, the names or the the images? Uh if you scroll down, there's one there that's like a it's the people hate it. It's a it's a mosquito with like a orange. Uh, maybe it's a bit higher up actually. Um that one I did first and then 
Yeah, that one. <laughs> no one likes it. It's not very cute <laughs> or anything, you know. But I was thinking, how could a how could you get like a vitamin C injection, you know, something like that, if you wanted to <laughs> do a mosquito that uh, could inject vitamin C. And then, yeah, I kind of started sharing them. And then, then I did the strawberry cow, which doesn't really, I guess for strawberry milk, it would make sense, but the name doesn't really work as a pun. And <laughs> and then, then people started saying, oh, draw this, draw this, you know, so it's kind of been a bit of the <laughs> names have been crowdfunded too. So, yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been really good. No, it's just such, just such a clever idea. I'm, I'm glad that you, you, you worked on it that long and finally allowed all of us to check this out. It's, it's oh just, yeah, it's just neat. It's just different. Yeah, I think that's the one thing is uh, it's different, you know. So I think people either like it or hate it, you know. <laughs> you know, well, people it, it, obviously it's, don't hate it with all the. Yeah. Yeah, four four hundred and twenty two people aren't are not backing you out of spite and anger. Oh, well, that's cool. <laughs> I'm really hoping, man, if we can get to five hundred the printing process changes so it's going to change from uh, like a digital printing we can get it print with uh, a lifo so it can the quality can be uh, like really great so that's what we're really hoping for if we can get to 500 uh, books ordered it'll just change the whole the whole you know the project will be amazing because it's going to be like then i'll get excited about that because it's going to be a really like amazing book you know in the chat, Shawnee says, I love the whimsical nature of the art and can't wait to see it all in person. Oh, thanks, Shawnee. And then Mark says, wow, that art is super cool. And CC says, I love the way the catfish looks. The catfish <laughs> jumped out at me. Uh, and yeah, the it's my favorite. Too. Yeah, it's my favorite, the catfish. Huh? So um, how are you? Um, is there a how do you keep the cost down to shipping for us in the u.s you know uh oh uh, so it's actually it's all shipping from the uk so that's mm -hmm. another thing andy's based in the uk i'm obviously in new zealand uh, mm -hmm. so that's that's dropped the price a lot and he's done he's done nine or ten kickstarters i think mm -hmm. so he knows all of that side so that's why it's been such a good partnership because he's been able to say you know we can only fit so much in a package and right. it's a good price but if it goes over that it's going to get really expensive so mm -hmm. yeah it's a lot of stuff i would have had no idea and i think it can really go wrong if you commit to you know sending a whole lot of stuff and then because people yeah. order two or three and then you can't fit it in the package and the postage changes so yeah if you yeah. break four pounds international you've destroyed yourself yeah oh, yeah. yeah that's what he said you know so you got to be so careful right Mm -hmm. So even now we're trying to work out because some people have ordered signed copies. So if it, if that number gets pretty high, we have to send them all to New Zealand. I got to sign them, and then we got to ship it from here again. So those mm -hmm. ones are a bit more. But we're thinking, oh, maybe if it's a lot, I should just rather go to to the UK and sign there. <laughs> I was going to say <laughs> a plane ticket way. might be cheaper. Yeah, I mean it might be. That's a, that's what you're thinking, you know. So we'll see. It, I, and I just I, checked the American shipping. It's not bad. It's only twelve dollars. Which, if you're thinking you're getting a book, it's a hardcover yeah. book. That's that's not unreasonable. Okay. I, I paid twelve dollars for American ship Kickstarters at times, depending. Oh, on really? Their shipping. So that's not bad at all. Oh, um, great. It's really weird. It seems to cost us more money to ship out of the states to other countries than it does for other countries to ship to us. Which wow, is, yeah. I, I have had uh, you know British backers kind of complain saying i just shipped a book to my cousin who's in you know chicago i'll just say because we heard that thing um and i only paid ten dollars why are you charging 24 and i'm like because it costs 24 dollars yeah. from here i don't know what to tell you i don't know yeah. <clears throat> why it goes that you know it does it isn't reciprocated but it is I, it's just a fact of life i know is, why kevin it's because mm, we're dirty we're dirty oh. people. And they don't <laughs> want us in their country, any part of us. Because we're dirty. And even your, stuff. even your mail. <laughs> even your, even our mail. Well, it's run scared. by the government, so. <laughs> <laughs> They've seen who we choose to elect, uh, and they're just like, "You disgust us as human beings. 
please do not influence any of our people. And books are very dangerous. Yeah, because yeah. they can learn something. It's immersive. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, in the chat, CC did have have a thought. Um, have you thought about a book plate? It's more wow. of a sticker that could just yeah. be sent to you. You could sign it, and they could be slapped yeah, in the book. I, don't know, I mean, that would be amazing, right? But I don't know if people would like. Do you think people would feel? Uh, you know, I've, I've asked for a signed book. I mean, if you if you got a signature in there, I think it'd be. That's actually a very good point, eh? It's it's yeah. certainly it's something I would run by the backers and, and see, especially you know how many people have backed that tier. If you've got like thirty people back in that tier, you might yeah. want to make sure you, that. Go. Sorry, if you do something like this, so this is a book plate we did for Oz because again he just lived in another part of the state, and you know oh, okay. he did an original print on it, and then he wrote signed and hand numbered it you know so it's all special yeah. well all 250 hardcover books of this had that special plate on it and then he was very happy and we left room if i wanted to sign it in a, a pen you know and oh, okay mm -hmm. were people and pretty then, like people happy with that oh yeah there were it happens all the time i mean if you go in any okay. bookstore there's tons of book plates because the publishers are like somewhere else than where mm -hmm. the author yeah. is so it's easier to send like a pack of postcards versus yeah. You know, and, and then nowadays, how did you put those in the book? Uh -huh. How did you put so, them in the book to Travis? Uh, so I just slipped them in, but uh, you, it's it's not that expensive to put an adhesive envelope. In fact, some some store ones will even do it. If you tell them you're doing a book plate, they can make a spot for it. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's a very good option, you know, especially, you know, with uh, uh, like uh, fuel emissions and all of that. It's a mm -hmm. kind of rude to be shipping stuff back and forth really well i mean and you can i you and andy can look over the numbers and you know if you've got eight people asking for it then probably just ship the books and do it but if you yeah. do have 30 40 50 80 uh it, it, yeah, it might be better to do that right. or, or i like your idea of flying over and doing the signing just so you can get <laughs> a, a a trip to england that'd be pretty nice uh, yeah maybe we'll see uh, some of them, I've, I included some original artwork, you know, so those ones, it's got to go from here. But for signed books, maybe that's a very good option, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it is, it is. Um, I mean, it's still an original thing because, you, you know, it's kind of, if you stuck something in there, that's, that's pretty genuine. Well, yeah. we've, we've talked about each of the campaigns, so let's talk about what led, um, why do a book either all ages or for little kids what is it that brought each of you guys to to making a book like this uh, i know travis kind of does books kind of for every age range his, his stuff is usually more mature his wife's is usually for kids but what is it that brought everybody here to doing uh books for kids oh brett i'll go first um so for me i mean my Dust Bunny Mafia was always intended to be all ages. And so it's an ode to newspaper comics of, you know, the past. And, you know, especially with scandals happening now with, you know, famous newspaper strips that have been around for 20 years um, and things like that. What you say can get pulled and, you know, your life's work can be trashed in, you know, a matter of hours um, or your credibility, at least. And so like Dust Bunny Mafia has always been a, you know, I loved growing up reading this, you know, the comics and the newspaper comics, Calvin and Hobbes, Garfield, Peanuts, yeah. you know, and the list goes on. I mean, I've, if someone asked me what was my favorite newspaper comic, can I list 20? Um, <laughs> yeah. And so like when I wanted to, uh, when I grew up and knew that I wasn't going to go into animation or wasn't going to be an artist for my living, I was like, well, nothing's stopping me from making a comic. And because I had a background in illustration, I had the knowledge on how to make a website and I had a day job. So I'm like, you know what? I need some, I need an artistic outlet. And so I was like, let's, you know, I was sitting in traffic and I came up with the idea of dust by mafia based on a license plate where I saw DBM. And, That's cool, man. Eh? And it just was like, I need to write that down. I was 
and you know, sitting in traffic, I was like, I've got two hours to kill. What could that stand for? It came to me. I wrote it on a post-it note. By the time I got home, I had like the six main dust bunnies kind of thought out, at least conceptually. Uh, and right. so I was like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make it something that both kids can enjoy and adults can enjoy. Like the comics, like Looney Tunes, stuff for kids, stuff for adults, and just have a good time with that. And then this next, you know, spinoff is continuing the tradition, just now trying to, you know, do a little bit more into going from comics to reading, like, and to eventually get people into more prose books and kids into mm -hmm. reading more, you know, especially the reluctant readers that are like, yeah, I don't want to get into that yet. Yeah. I like the way uh, I just noticed on your on your book, like the, even the text is very spaced, you know, so it doesn't feel like a, very dense, which is quite cool, actually. Like it feels like easy to read and felt kind of, you know, like nice to read. And I think yeah, kids, that's who, actually... kids who don't love to read, I, I think they the fewer words on the page, the less intimidating, the yeah, more likely yeah, they are. The... To, to get into it. So I think it's really smart of you guys to do it in that way. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that helped in that matter is um, Dan, my co-author is dyslexic. And so he knew the challenges of trying to read being dyslexic. Okay. And it wasn't until later in life that it was discovered. That's why he had trouble and oh. all the trouble that he did. And so he's very conscious in his writing that of things like that and so we're trying to find fonts i mean that was just a mock-up but we're looking at fonts that are easier for uh you know less characters and less you know flair so that it helps people with reading disabilities as oh well as very smart huh? more of a normal yeah yeah that's a really good approach eh? yeah a lot, a lot of thought went into it. Did you put that thought into it, Rob, or did you just type it out and <laughs> and 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 say so they're going to let me look at my beautiful art? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's. I uh, certainly haven't put much thought into it. You know, it's just it's it started with the pictures, so that's where the story came from. I wasn't thinking about age groups at all, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but I think just from experience and people engaging with the work. Most people from, you know, little kids find it funny and grown ups find it funny too. So I think for that reason, it kind of it's, goes the spectrum of, yeah, people of all ages tend to find it a bit amusing or silly, you know. Maybe it's just, maybe people who are, are very immature find it amusing. I, I think, I think that it's, I, I, the art is so superb that. Oh, I, thanks. Man. I, I, I think you're downplaying it a little bit because you just you see those pieces and you know like in, in a in a, a different choice I could see this as an art gallery showing where people everybody shows up and these are just paintings on the wall. Uh, I started yeah, <laughs> yeah. Originally I was in Japan when I first did it and we I had an exhibition there. Yeah, so yeah, I've actually <laughs> I included the originals on this Kickstarter and those are all sold as well. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Nice. That's such a nice. Well, um, Travis, I know I know that usually Heather does the kids. Have you done anything that's that's all ages or for kids or, or? Uh, well, believe it or not, I'm actually working on one. I just uh Ventures of Byron, which is a book that came out through mm -hmm. Scooch, which is a great he's a great guy. He actually messaged me. And we are working on something right now that is uh, all ages. Uh, and then Cthulhu invades. Uh, we keep it as low as you can. I mean, we have Cthulhu, so there's a little bit of violence, but we try to keep it cartoony. Sort of a PG world. Yeah, world yeah. PG, wrestling PG. type. Action. Exactly, exactly. There's no swearing or any of, of that stuff. Um, but it's actually this year has been very eye-opening to me as a comic creator. Um when I think of comic creators, I think of, you know, Mark Wade and, you know, Donnie Cates and Chris Claremont and Jim Lee and all these beautiful, uh, you know, people that we read every week in our monthly comic stores. But I, as I'm growing older and understanding the markets and understanding, you know, where to put my product, you go into a bookstore now and there is tons of comic artists who are not even in the scene, right? I don't know any of these people. 
but there's volumes and volumes of their books that are selling. And I'm not just talking about Dogman and Captain mm-hmm. Underpants and Dork Diaries and all that. Uh, there is a whole genre of comic creators who don't even care that Marvel and DC or anything that comes out with an eye mm-hmm. or Dark Horse in it yeah. even exists. And that really inspired me uh, of what you could do with the form because, you know, I look at, I want to create comics, so this is my one path. But when I see all these creators who I don't know who they are, have multiple mm-hmm. volumes, primary real estate, you know, they're they're getting aisle ends of a, of a Barnes & Noble. It's an interesting thing. Um, so when I think about all ages, you know, I think about that. I really, uh, for this particular book, my wife is just so unique. You know, uh, she's the best things ever happened to me. Uh, she's awesome. I am so blessed. Uh, you know, she's always trying to push envelopes. You know, she's the one who gets you the glow in the dark covers and all the cool mm-hmm. stuff that we have as add ons. She's the one who's like, hey, you know how comics are really expensive? Yeah. How much do you think it'd be to produce a song? Guess what? That's also expensive. Uh, but we <laughs> know going into it that we're not going to make the money back in the Kickstarter. Like, it's super right. stressful to me. Like, if, if being all real, uh, like, I'm so used to funding day three with like a hundred plus backers and going to the thing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm on like almost starting the second week and I don't even have 50 and I'm not funded. Like it's a so different thing. And my self-worth is like down the tube. I'm like, clearly I'm horrible. (laughs) I'm a horrible husband. I'm not providing for her and getting the stuff, but it's just where the market is and, and where you're marketing these things. So it's, 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 it's it's harder, and so I see why Marvel and DC don't do it. Yes, it's so much harder, right? I see why Scout tries to put it at two dollars, even though the creators aren't going to make a lot of money on a two dollar book. It's it's so hard, but at the end of the day, it's the most important thing we can do because it dies if you don't. All it, of it, it yeah, die yeah. If you don't. It, so, we, what we need to do is, you know, going going along the line is we need to get a two, three, four year old kid excited about looking at pictures, seeing letters, hearing this fun song and enjoying it. And then three, four five years later, reading this book for reluctant readers that, you know, kind of bridges the gap between this this three panel cartoon and a, and a novel and then that you know this you know kind of mix between uh dr moreau and you know flowers for algernon with this crazy ass art you know 13 14 15 you're looking at and i can see college kids kind of you know um maybe indulging in some things that 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 they depending on what state they're in is legal or not legal and (laughs) having a blast uh you know looking at that book so this building this readership is just good for everybody that's why i'm always huge on anybody doing something either for young children or all ages because i'm very selfish and i want readers in five years eight years or 15 years depending on which book we're talking about Mm. yeah it's it's super wild to me you know i i recently uh, you may not know him rob richard fairgraves he's from new zealand oh i don't know man um yeah, Richard Fairgraves, and I, I just learned him, and I was just like, well, I haven't really seen you on the scene. Like, I've heard your name a couple of times. I haven't seen you. He's like, I've written, like, 150 books. I was like, what are you <laughs> talking about? There is nobody in the indie or comic scene that I don't know their name who's written 100, and it was all yeah. because it was in bookstores. Hmm. So where's that going through, then? It doesn't go through normal comic publishing streams? It goes straight to bigger publishers or what? It goes to bookstores. Yeah, he, he they'll mm-hmm. sign to a sorcerer yeah. Easter and they'll sell okay. it in bookstores, and they'll they'll never get into the comics market, and they're doing their own thing, you know. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Uh, and it's it, it was wild to me. It really was because I'm I, I'm not trying to sound egotistical. I know a lot about comics. I read a lot of comics. Oh, I can tell you. Every day in, in yeah. indie comics, yeah. I know everybody in the scene. I can name so many things. To meet someone who's like I've made, I'm not gonna. Put him on blast, but he, it's a lot of friggin' money how much he's made in comics. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, and no one knows my name. Wow, he's like, 
I if anybody's it. made any money in comics, I, I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> you made $15 if you go to Taco Bell? Tell me more. <laughs> if you can feed four people with the amount of pizza you made from your comics, you are a hero to me. Um, <laughs> I mean no. that's why that's why Brett and I are making books about food. We're just <laughs> just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, and under caffeinated. Um, that yeah, that's 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 how you can do it without the food. Well, let's do in case somebody's come in just in the last five minutes um, on the live stream. Let's do another thirty second pitch. Brett, we'll start with you. Uh, just one more time on Detective Potatoes in case somebody. Uh, missed what you talked about. Uh, who is this for and what is Detective Potatoes? Of course, uh, Detective Potatoes is an all ages uh, noir detective story um, featuring, it is a uh, spinoff of my Dust Bunny Mafia comics in which uh, Mickey Potatoes, a pigeon detective who's basically a Dick Tracy uh, style ripoff um, is investigating why there is a coffee apocalypse in his city and he enlists the unlikely help of the Dust Bunny Mafia to solve the case. Nice. Sounds amazing, Rob, man. Yeah, Rob, one, one last time from, from the future. Uh, yeah. What are samples from the lab? Uh, it's an illustrated scientific journal um, full of these cute monstrosities that really shouldn't exist, but actually do. <laughs> Very nice. Travis. <laughs> Uh, cottage cheese. Yes. Cottage cheese. Come on. <laughs> play the song one more time. <laughs> I'll, play, I'll, play, I'll play a bit of it. Just. Oh, thank you, man. Because it's going it to stick in my head. You, you play it. I'm going to try to find my phone so I can do the last bit of the show. <laughs> um, no. Uh, so the Super Delish Sing Along cottage, comic book Cottage Cheese is a comic book and a song put together. It is a wonderful hybrid of the two. You get a comic book, you get a song that goes with it. My wife wrote the song. We sing about cottage cheese. Every song lyric is in the book. You can have a good time with your kids. There's activities in the back. Um, and it's not funded yet, so please help me. Um, please. I, I just I'm me backing it for sure, man. Thank you. Thank you. You need cottage cheese in your life. I do. <laughs> I think that is my backtrack for my life, that soundtrack. I love it. Right. You'd, you'd make better animal hybrids if you had cottage cheese. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and the protein. The protein. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do the first 15 or 20 seconds of it for, for anybody that missed it at the beginning. And here we go. Oops. Oh, no. Wrong one. Do you need me to do it? Are we seeing Super Delish or not here? No. Oh, yeah. We're seeing that. Uh, yeah, just about 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah. There you go. To share. All right. Uh, big. Grammy sitting in the ocean, kicking that roll to the keys. He once drank a secret potion with a pinch of cottage cheese. There you go. 15 <laughs> seconds of cottage Beautiful, cheese right. goodness for your ear, airwaves. See, see, here's what I want. I want a, a studio with a fader so we can get into the to cottage. Oh, uh, yeah. But we, we don't, we're not quite there yet. We don't have that. Uh, in the chat, uh, CC asked, is that a dog? Yes, that is my, my dog, Harpo Parks. He's he not feeling too good uh, tonight, so he wanted to be on my lap. He's, uh, he is a drama queen when his tummy hurts. And uh, so <laughs> normally he sleeps on the couch when we do this. But tonight he needed to make me sweat my ass off because I was holding a 15-pound dog the entire time. But, you know, we'll do, we'll do it. We'll do it for Harpo. He's, 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 he's having a tough time we added a puppy three weeks ago and he's uh not the most dog friendly dog so uh oh has it been, the, been a bit of an adjustment for him he's doing he's doing better than we could have hoped um but yeah we we didn't think we could ever get another dog but we got a female puppy that's going to be smaller than him okay so we feel like it's the <laughs> least intimidating yeah, yeah okay. dog to bring in the house and uh hopefully Hopefully he'll get get uh, better. He's doing good. He's doing good, but uh, I don't uh, think. Him... Did you did you get another dog for him to for company for him or? Uh, what um, prompted a new dog? Sort of. 
Sort of because I hate to have a dogless home. Yeah. And if you have two dogs and inevitably one leaves you, you look at each other and go, wow, we really need to get a dog for yeah. him or her because yeah, yeah, yeah. they're going to be lonely. Yeah. But if you're a one dog home and you lose the dog, you can't even think about bringing another dog in for like six months or a year. Yeah. And yep. so, you know, I like to have multiple dogs so that you have the option of bringing another dog in. So you don't have okay. to have that terrible life as a dogless home or I'm <laughs> sure people with cats feel feel the same way. I'm just very allergic to cats. So they're not in my discussion, but they're <laughs> we have a feral cat outside we feed every night because uh <laughs> because okay. we're softies. <laughs> Good hearted. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We, we we like to say it that way, but I'm sure uh, people look at the situation from outside and make their own decisions. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, I'd love for you to hang with me. I'm just going to talk about some of the campaigns that are still live that um, have been on the show. Um, and I think we just one just closed. Uh, big congratulations to John Eddingfield II. Rancidville funded today. So the finale of Rancidville came through. We're going to get that book. Uh, Ryan Krobos, um, uh, Sunmaker, just missed it. They had an incredible close, but they did just miss funding. So Ryan is going back to the drawing board and he's going to figure out what to do because I need to read Sunmaker 3. So get on that, Ryan. Um, that Charlie was a Stickney, yeah. And, yeah. I mean, I, I was pulling for him. I was trying to you know, rally support in a bunch of groups and be like, mystify you like 50 bucks. And yeah, I saw breast message like at nine eighteen, And I was like, so, cause I would have thrown 50 bucks in, you know, uh, just it's, it sucks. I wish Kickstarter had a thing. Like if you were getting back if like to the last second, it extends like a half hour or like an hour. Like it keeps extending as long as it keeps getting pledges towards the end, you know? Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting, almost like a you know, a, a, a extra extra time in in football. Right. Um, yeah, injury injury time for a Kickstarter. <laughs> that's what you should do. Like if you get if you get the flu in the middle of the Kickstarter, you should be able to call injury time and add three days. <laughs> you know, like yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, no, Ryan Ryan's best best guy in the world he's he's super like he's in a, like a, a friggin champion and because that's what ryan is and he's gonna he's gonna come out the other side stronger and we have we have no worries on that uh charlie stickney is on uh the kickstarter with glarian short and deadly he's um like rob charlie is having a rough time he hasn't quite hit 1400 backers he's still eight backers away from 1400 on the glarian <laughs> campaign it's very so, stressful to him yeah. So um, if you want a beautiful book from a great guy, check that out. I think that one will fund. Um, uh, Brant Fowler's In the Land of the Dragon 1 and 2. This is a cy cyberpunk fantasy about two corporations fighting over a, a mystical child that will basically mm -hmm. the Coke and Pepsi of the city are fighting yeah. over a magic child. So oh, uh, wow. with sweet ass motorcycle action. Um, Hairology. Um, Phil and Kat have an anthology um, all about hair, and they got some lady named Gail Simone to write the foreword for it, you know, so um, check that one out if you want it. Phil and Kat always deliver. Uh, John uh, uh, John from Drumsticks of Doom couldn't come on. Uh, he had a scheduling conflict, but this book, Drumsticks of Doom, is a really cool one. Instead of the Beatles being the biggest band in the world, I believe it's Judas Priest becomes the biggest band in the world. And that changes all of reality, including bringing like um, monsters and stuff into reality. So that's the, that's the cool, world. Of, yeah, the world of drumsticks of doom is super cool. Um, Sync 1 through 11. This is actually uh, John Lees and Alex Cormick's uh, crime horror comedy in glasgow scotland so um, it is yeah it's it's visceral and awesome and definitely if you're like a pulp fiction type of a storytelling check out sync Love it. um you uh, the super delish sing-along comic book i think we might have talked about that one 
Uh, myth false. Cece is in the chat. She uh, wrote about this. This is her maladaptive daydreams brought into reality. Uh, myth has uh, Egyptian gods, uh, space shenanigans, uh, and absolutely stunning art. So do be sure to check out the myth campaign. Mythful? myth one word. Okay. M Y T H F A L L. Okay. Uh, issue one. It's her, her debut comic, and uh, it uh, it absolutely looks stunning. And a uh, uh, little little teaser. Um, Madeline Holly Rosling will be on the show, I believe, in two weeks to talk about her newest uh, Boston Metaphysical Society book. Um, gentlemen, I super appreciate you uh, being from from. Two hours north of me, uh, Chicago is a, 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 probably about a seven-hour flight, and from the other side of the, the future. world, from the future, Rob, from the future. Is, Brett and Rob, <laughs> it's great to meet you. Travis, always great to to talk comics. Um, have a great night, hey guys, and, and a great early evening. Thank yeah, you. thank you so much, eh? And uh, great to meet you all, truly. All right, can't can't wait to get your books, gentlemen. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.